Welcome, ladies, to the Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co-hosts, Liz and Andressa. Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz. And this is Andressa. Welcome back to the Real Estate Investor Show. You are back with a Minnesota edition, right on, Jessa? I know we used to do some sound effects, but we've been missing that. We got to bring our sound, our bad sound effects back to the show. <laughs> You're our bad sound effects. That's correct. Uh, so we uh, record and produce a Minnesota once a week. Um, give those, you know, share those on Tuesdays, and then Fridays we do a interview style with uh, yeah. rock star women. So you are back with another Minnesota, which we we focus on ten minutes or less. Talk about a topic that is coming up for us that you know focuses on investing or business or self care, and we kind of get right to it and and give you some takeaways as well. So we're going to talk about. I, I love this topic. Is positivity always positive? Mm. I love that, and, and I'm just is going to lead this. I'm so curious to hear what she has to say here. <laughs> So here's the thing. I need to, I think I feel I need to start this with a disclaimer, right? To me, it's like needless to say, living a positive life is better than living a negative life because it takes a lot of energy to be negative, to be like down, right? So I'm all about living a positive life. I look at life from the lens of, okay, what is the good in it? What are the good in people? That's that's how I look at that. What I want to bring to to this table here is that is positivity always positive? Because we are in the social media world where we see all the best from people's lives on display. And then we compare that with our raw life. And then there is a discrepancy, right? <laughs> Obviously, there is a discrepancy because they're always like in a good mood, all the good stuff, good skin, good hair. You know, it looks perfect. <laughs> and then it's like, oh my gosh, it's just, it's just me or what's, what's, what's going on around? So I think that there's a lot of pressure on um, being positive all the time. Do you feel that pressure, Liz, or you're, you're good? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm listening to, and this is something that you recommended, um, untamed. Mm -hmm. I'm not listening. I'm reading it. It's a book. Mm -hmm. Um, Love and her, and, I want to yeah, hang out with her. Yeah. She's great. Glennon Doyle. She's, she's, I'm really enjoying her work. Why I'm mentioning that though, really quickly is that she talks a lot about something that happens, especially as women that we're supposed to just just be grateful for what we have. And and mm. there's so much truth in actually gratitude. So I'm not trying to dismiss the act of gratitude by any means because that's it's it's an incredibly important it's like hope, it's love. It, it, it's something that we all need to honor and and create more of it in our lives. What she said the point of to your point about positivity is like sometimes we like talk ourselves into something and just say we almost are being positive about something because we just are taught to be positive and, and, and not just positive, but, and, and on the, it's a accompanying emotion is gratitude. Mm -hmm. And in her example was that she wasn't being true to herself, she wasn't true to her, her, you know, who she was, who she was in the world because she just was always taught to be positive and to just be grateful for what she has because it could be worse. So mm. I thought, I think that's, again, we're going deep here, but I, that's where we go. And that's what we need to do. If we really want to create that financial freedom in, in, on our own terms, we can't do that without these kinds of conversations. So I know that's, I know you're probably, you know, that wasn't exactly the, I don't know if there's the right exact, you know, example that to is, give you, but I, that's what comes up for me. And I think yeah. we're just taught so many times, like be positive, be positive. It's okay. Just be positive. And we're not Yes, be positive. Of course, we're not we're not disagreeing with the power of positivity and gratitude. But when it comes in the way of your being true to yourself and being honest with yourself and being kind of like authentic with yourself, mm -hmm. well, then those those things are being misused. I think I totally agree. You know, it's it's like in in real estate. 
there's so many moments, you know, when your general contractor goes away with <laughs> a bunch of zeros. <laughs> yep. Uh, or in there, when the partnerships don't 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 go well, and you just share this with other people. Well, but you need to be grateful that it could be worse, or or you know, you can go into that rabbit hole. My point here is that the more that we are even aware of what we are feeling, if we are not even aware, that's even it's just a bigger problem, right? that we are yep. not even aware of what we are feeling, then we, therefore we cannot even acknowledge or deal with it. So let's part, let's come from that, that principle that you are aware that you are angry, you're sad or, or whatever that feeling is that you can name it. You can name whatever that feeling is. Suppressing that feeling or just saying, no, 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 I'm not angry. I'm just, you know, I'm going to be happy. And then you take a deep breath. You say a couple of affirmations and like, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. You're kind of like trying to trick your own, your own brain. And the way that I see it is just like, you're suppressing the feeling. It's like a volcano. It's like lava. It, It won't go away. You're just, you are just choosing to deal with that feeling at another time. And it might not be your choice when it bursts out like lava. It might not be your choice. Oh, that was not a good time to deal with that feeling, right? So what what I'm encouraging, two things over here I would encourage. The number one is once you're aware of it, embrace it. Embrace it. You are sad. I am sad or I am pissed off right now. Right, those are the good moments to not make any decision or talk to, you know, have Send a, back that email, <laughs> getting back to emails or having yeah. you know uh, team leadership conversations. Not a good time, not 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 a good time at all to 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 make those those calls there. But em- embracing it and letting it sink. Uh, my son, he's six years old, right? So uh, still a limited vocabulary. Um, and I got this kit for him called time in that it really helps him to name the emotion. What is the emotion that he's feeling? And sometimes I, I, I talk to him when he is in that different zone and I say, Oh, you, you look very sad. He's like, no sad, not sad. And he, he points what feeling that is. I am like angry and mad. I was like, okay, angry and mad, not Mm. sad. Correct. So it really helped, right? The goal here is for me to support him naming the feelings. So he's an adult that understands and can name whatever he's feeling and be aware of what it is Mm. when that is happening. So he doesn't suppress. The other thing that has happened to me in different times, but more recently, I was more cautious and experimenting it is like, it it is like a flu. It it has to run its course. Mm. And I share that with, I share it with Liz. And when I, and which is my third suggestion to you to share with your core team when you're feeling that so you can process together and um, get out of that, that negative, you know, cloud, if you, if you wish. I remember having a conversation with Liz and then she said, um, how about if we do X, Y, and Z on this? And I was like, that is a good option, but let, let me slip sleep no sleep (laughs) let me sleep on this feeling right now let me see how am i feeling about this tomorrow because i don't feel that at this moment i will make a conscious choice because Mm. i'm still feeling sad the 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 sensation that i felt was sadness and i was like how can i let this go so i process it with with liz and i i Put myself aside and look at the situation, but I also gave myself grace and time to see would I be feeling like this 
a day from now, two days from now. And actually the next day I was not feeling that way. It was more rational. And I said, okay, now I, I can make very, um, uh, not not an emotional, but more rational decision that I yeah. feel it's fair. So that's what I will recommend to you guys. Um, embrace the feeling, whatever the feeling it is. Acknowledge that there is there is a feeling. You can really rely on your core group, the core friends that you are able to be vulnerable with uh, in order to get out of it. And if you are having a hard time letting you go of this, then seek future future support uh, on that. But uh, I don't like to carry things. So it comes in, it needs to get out and go somewhere else. So I have space for, for abundance. That's the goal. I love that. It's such an important topic. I absolutely love, especially for women, um, because I went into action mode. I went into, I don't remember exactly what this, I'm, I'm thinking I may know what you're talking about, yeah, so but there's been multiple <laughs> conversations. So it could be a bunch of different things, to be honest. But it's not, it's not weird. It's not weird to think that like to go into solution mode and, you know, and I, I think that brings up like femininity, masculinity, regardless of however you, you know, however yeah. you identify yourself, there is a level of femininity of the being. And when you're being with the emotion, you're identifying it, you're being with it, which you, you, which you do really well and you allow it to come in and then to release it. Now it's time to get into, okay, how do I move through this in a positive way? Uh, what in this can I be grateful for? That's when you ask those questions. Mm -hmm. That's when those questions are so, so helpful and powerful. And that's why those ways of being are powerful. It just shouldn't be that knee jerk reaction because mm -hmm. then it suppresses our, suppresses how we feel. Something I need to get better with, to be honest. You've taught me that, oh, I can actually be in this emotion right now. <gasps> wow. You know, and that wasn't even taught to me from my parents. I think that's a lot of like, societal upbringing, I do, you know, and I think as women, we're just, you know, taught to just keep trudging, keep going, you know, be grateful yeah. what you got. And <laughs> even, even with, with men, so. I had a, a situation where a man expressed his, his feelings to me. And, and the first thing that I did besides be, before addressing it, I really acknowledge the feeling that was what he was feeling it was a yeah. team meeting and that's what it was he was feeling and i really wanted him to get that i acknowledged the feeling i didn't justify it or or i love that agree with it but i acknowledge his feeling and i think that we don't do Huge. that much especially with teams if you are if you are growing and and building a team as a leadership position um I think acknowledging, first of all, what your team member is feeling at that moment, it, it, it opens up so much goodness into the conversation. Oh my gosh. It's not even yeah. funny. That's huge. So I love that as a takeaway is that, you know, are you aware of how you feel? I know for me, I, that's an area that I needed to improve on. I don't think that's an uncommon area for a lot of women, maybe some, but I, I know for me, I sometimes feel like I'm in elementary school. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm emotionally aware, but sometimes I'm not, right? Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Are you aware of, of what's coming up for you without suppressing it? Because that's not going to be helpful. And number two, are you acknowledging the feelings of the people around you, the, your peers, your team, yes. your business partners, your contractor, your banker, your children? Yeah, because by you acknowledging it in them, you're creating a safe space for them to acknowledge it for other people. Oh my gosh, I got goosebumps! Right? Yes, popped out <laughs> of my mouth. But anyway, I think that's a huge <laughs> good, bad, or indifferent pops out of my mouth. But I think that's a huge thing we can do as leaders and as women who are on this path of not just investing for investing sake, but we're creating financial freedom. We're doing big things. The women listening to us right now are doing big things in their lives. And, and that comes with a responsibility to be our best self. And how can you do that if you're not acknowledging your own feelings and the feelings around you? Because uh, the body's not going to do it. They're just going to go back on Facebook and just look at how amazing everyone else's lives are to, to how you started this. So um, very right. cool stuff. Very good conversation. Thank you so much for all of you that are here with us listening. I encourage you to answer this questions. Uh, let us know. What do you think? Let's start this conversation here. Uh, and don't forget, we have your back.
Bye. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There, you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community, and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.